The Assyriology channel is dedicated to the study of ancient Mesopotamia and the ancient Near East. This video is part of a series that will discuss the concept of the determinative in Sumerian cuneiform. A determinative is a sign that was added preceding or following a term to label it as belonging to a specific semantic group. In most cases, it is not believed that determinatives were pronounced. The first determinative we're going to discuss is motion. This determinative was added preceding or following terms that were related to flying animals, such as birds or flying insects. I have a guest with me here today to give you a second voice to listen to. This will hopefully break up the sound a little bit and make it a little less monotonous not listening to the same voice drone on and on throughout the entire video. I feel it is worth mentioning that no one can say for certain exactly how Sumerian terms were pronounced. The Assyriological community has some ideas, however, we've learned Sumerian through the lens of Akkadian students who are studying the language hundreds if not thousands of years after it ceased to be spoken. Something else that I'd like to mention, and this is a disclaimer that I'll be making every so often in videos, so I apologize if it gets repetitive, is that I don't necessarily know how to correctly pronounce the names of all of the scholars that I reference. A lot of these names, I, well, I, I've read over and over for years and years, I've never actually heard someone say them aloud. So particularly with the German and French names that can sometimes be challenging for English speakers to say correctly, uh, I apologize if I, if I butcher them. The term buru is a Sumerian term for a small bird that lives in flocks, possibly a sparrow. The term was equated with the Akkadian term isuru, which means bird or birds. In 1954, Wilfred Lambert proposed the translation sparrow. From Religion, Literature, and Scholarship, the Sumerian composition of Nanshe and the Birds, with a catalog of Sumerian bird names by Nyik Veldhus. Buru Mushin corresponds to Akkadian Isuru, which simply means bird or birds. In Old Babylonian Sumerian literature, Buru Mushin denotes a small bird that lives in flocks. Lambert, 1954, proposed the translation sparrow, which is still a valid suggestion. The term ooze is a Sumerian term for a species of bird that is usually translated by Assyriologists as duck or goose. The term was equated with the Akkadian term usu or usum. The term usu is often thought to have been borrowed from the Sumerian ooze. However, the Sumerian term itself is likely to be an early Semitism, as suggested by Landsberger, Solonin, Steiner, and several other scholars. Note that in the earliest text, ooze may have been used to refer to the domestic goose. The term ooze is attested in a personal name from an early Farah text. Attested varieties of ooze mushin include ooze babar, which means white ooze, ooze babar niga, which means fattened white ooze, ooze gi, which means black ooze, and ooze kuku mushin, which means dark ooze bird. The birds were mentioned in late dynastic registries from Ur. The term paspasu is an Akkadian term for a duck with the logographic spelling Ustur. Steinkeller and Postgate, as well as Viltus, both equated Ustur with the Sumerian term Bibad. The term Tum is a Sumerian term for a wild bird. The term was equated with the Akkadian term Sumatu. Nik Veltus on the term. Sumerian tummushin means wild dove, perhaps the turtle dove. It is one of the most frequent bird names in Sumerian literature, where it is often associated with mourning and anxiety. The traditional nesting place of a dove is called ablal. Cursing of Agade, 219 to 221. May its, the cities, doves moan in their nooks. May its sparrows, partridges be smitten in their holes. May it be on its guard like a timid turtle dove. In the stele of the vulture Ianatum of Lagash, 
sends out doves as messengers to various gods to report on the oath in which the ruler of Uma had sworn not to occupy Lagash territory ever again. The term Igi Ra was a Sumerian term for a heron. The term was equated with the Akkadian term Igi Ru. The term is believed to specifically have referred to the purple heron. In the story, The Heron and the Turtle, the turtle destroys the bird's nest. Although several species of heron visit southern Mesopotamia, there are only three species of heron that are known to breed in the region. The purple heron, the squacko heron, and the goliath heron. Most herons build their nests up high where a turtle would not be able to reach. Purple herons build their nests down low by trampling down reed beds. The term arak is another Sumerian term for a heron. This term is believed to have likely referred to the gray heron. Gray herons do not breed in southern Mesopotamia, however they winter there in large numbers. The term tumgur is a Sumerian term for a domesticated pigeon. The term is believed to refer to the domesticated rock dove. Domesticated pigeons are often associated with being used as carrier birds. They are also domesticated for other purposes including to be used as potential food source. The old Babylonian culinary tablet YOS 225 contains an ingredient list that involves the use of pigeon meat. YOS 225 Amursanu broth split the pigeon in two. Meat is also used. Prepare water, add fat, salt to taste, breadcrumbs, onion, samadu, leek and garlic, mash with kisimu. The Oldest Cuisine in the World, Cooking in Mesopotamia, by Jean Botero. Note that the term used on this tablet was Amar Sag. During the Ur-3 period, Amar Sag means chick, and is used before the terms for other birds to indicate the bird is young. By the Old Babylonian period, the term had become another term for a dove, and it was equated with the Akkadian term Amar Sanu. The term Nuama was a Sumerian term for a bird. It is believed to have likely referred to the vulture. It was equated with the Akkadian term Zaibu and was not frequently attested in texts. There are numerous depictions of vultures from ancient Mesopotamian reliefs. As may be expected, vultures were often associated with death. A corpse being left unburied to be consumed by vultures was considered a harsh fate as proper burial was believed to help assure a proper place in the neither world. Letters dated to the kings of Assyria, such as Ashurbanipal, inform us that the bodies of soldiers who fought against these rulers were left unburied to be consumed by vultures. The above image is of the stele of vultures. This is a well-known relief from the Sumerian early dynastic period. It was created to celebrate the victory of Lagash over its neighbor Uma. At the top of the stele are the vultures for which it's named with the severed heads of the soldiers of Uma and their beaks. The image of the bottom left is a Neo-Syrian relief depicting vultures carrying human entrails. The image at the bottom right is a Neo-Assyrian relief depicting vultures attacking a dead enemy soldier who is killed by the Assyrian army. The term dar is a Sumerian term for the bird that is identified as the black Franklin. The term was equated with the Akkadian term itadum, which is onomatopoeic. According to the text, Nanshe and the birds, the bird cries, Tiku! Tiku! They often live near water and prefer to inhabit brushy areas and tall grasslands with thick vegetation. From Religion, Literature, and Scholarship, the Sumerian composition Nanshe and the Birds with a catalog of Sumerian bird names, by Nyik Valdhus. Darmushin is identified as the Franklin. In the Ebla vocabulary, Darmushin is rendered ba ra ma num, colorful, which is certainly an apt description for the Black Franklin. In various texts, the call of the Black Franklin is mentioned. A proverb in Collection 8 refers to Franklin calling on a clay wall which confirms its presence as a domestic bird. In Ur-3, the bird appears frequently 
as a domestic fowl that receives grain as fodder. The term heron is a Sumerian term that is believed to refer to the imperial eagle. It was equated with the Akkadian term urinu. The imperial eagle is a migratory predator. It is the most powerful bird of prey found in Mesopotamia. Similes and references involving eagle talons are frequent in Mesopotamian texts. An example of such a comparison would include an Earth 3 incantation against Samana disease. Samana, with the mouth of a lion, teeth of a dragon, claws of an eagle, tail of a scorpion. In Nanshe and the birds, the eagle is said to kill wild bulls and stags. It is implausible that any bird can kill animals of such size, but these lines effectively express the impression these birds made upon men. Curiously, Hurin Mushin is not found in the standard version of the old Babylonian list of birds in Nippur. One example, however, replaces Anzud Mushin, the mythical eagle, with Hurin Mushin. In 1983, Miguel Silva argued that the name of the bird at one point in time was a homophone, or perhaps identical with, the word for cedar in Sumerian, Gish Irin. Occasionally, the two words would switch places such as Aaron Mushin or Gish Hurin. The writing Aaron Namushin still appears in the Ugarit version Ur-Ra. In the same article, Civil demonstrates that the early dynastic spelling of the bird's name was Balag Mushin or Abalag Mushin. The term Buru Mushin was a Sumerian term for a type of bird. The term was equated with the Akkadian term Iribu. From the Ur-3 period onwards, it was a term for a crow. The meaning of early attestations of buru remains uncertain, but is believed to refer to a bird of prey or perhaps a vulture. The Mesopotamian crow is a subspecies of the hooded crow. However, it also sometimes is distinguished as its own species of crow. The bird is characterized by its pied coloration. From religion, Literature and Scholarship, the Sumerian composition Nanshe and the Birds by Nik Veltus. In early sources, Buru Mushin is a bird of prey, or perhaps a vulture. From the Ur three period onwards, the word means crow, corresponding to Akkadian Aribu. The Akkadian word probably means both raven and crow, corresponding in Sumerian to Ugamushin and Burumushin, respectively. Civil argued that since Ugamushin in Sumerian literature has more character than Burumushin, the first is more likely the raven. A common expression in literary texts is Burumushin dugud. Heavy Buru birds, probably flock of Buru birds, which is more likely for crow than for raven. The term bur is a Sumerian term for a locust. The term was equated with the Akkadian term urbu. Locusts are a type of flying grasshopper. They migrate in vast swarms and can cause extensive damage to crops. In ancient Mesopotamia, they were potentially a major threat to agricultural production. Concern about the danger of locusts to crops is referenced in several texts, including the farmer's instructions. I hope you've enjoyed this video on Sumerian avian terminology. Two works that were referenced in this video include Religion, Literature, and Scholarship, The Sumerian Composition of Nanshe and the Birds by Nick Vildos, and a study of Sumerian faunal conception with a focus on terms pertaining to the order of testerdines by Jeremiah Peterson. Thank you for watching the Assyriology channel. If you've enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. If you didn't, please let us know why in the comments section below. Hit the subscribe button to see more videos on ancient Mesopotamia.